Well, let's, I mean, you want to talk about another legacy of the Democratic Party? Um, one, one that is officially a legacy now, Matt? Yeah, so um, let's do a little bit on Madeleine Albright on the day of her passing. Uh, I'm not the person to fully historicize Madeleine Albright. I'll be looking forward to the usual publications doing their obituaries. Uh, but there is a, uh, um, a clip going around, uh, which is one of the beautiful things about social media is, frankly, how we can properly uh, memorialize people who had an absolutely catastrophic uh, effect on the world. Um, and mm. one of those is Madeleine Albright. So I, I got a couple tweets here. The first one is just from Lawboy, um, who puts it, I think, pretty succinctly here, uh, saying, uh, RIP Madeleine Albright. Uh, from being a refugee to creating millions of them, she truly embraced the full spectrum of the human experience. Uh, as we'll put there. But this is the clip that everyone um, has been posting on social media. Um, and this is from uh, this time by uh, Alan McLeod of Mint Press News. Uh, and he writes, as Secretary of State in the 1990s, Albright oversaw the U.S. starvation of Iraq, an action which killed 1 million people, including 500 thousand young children successive u.n diplomats resigned over the matter uh claiming it was a genocide and uh, here is just that um and you know we'll run the 60 minutes <laughs> gauntlet here with copyright but uh here oh, yeah, is think about that uh here is uh, this because i think this this one is that we need to play um here is uh Madeline albright we have heard that a half a million children have died i mean that's more children then died when, when, in, in Hiroshima. And, and, you know, is the price worth it? I think this is a very hard choice, but the price, we think the price is worth it. Uh, yeah. You know, and the, and the truth, that, the, the statistics of the people who died because of the U.S. Uh, sanctions regime against um, Iraq, um, there is like is despicable enough on its um, own, and the real tragedy is then following that clip a few years later, the United States uh, would only continue its uh, terror uh, campaign against the people of Iraq. It's 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 horrifying to think, um, you know, what generations now have experienced. You know, children, you know, mothers, fathers, and children experiencing death and destruction. Um, you know, for the vanity and for the U.S. policy goals. Um, of a few people uh, from half a world away, it's it's truly despicable. Yeah, I mean, this is why I'm 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 frankly happy what we've emphasized with Mike Preisner and Carl Bayer about the sanctions mm -hmm. uh, lately, because I think like this stuff is is it is war <laughs> and it's murderous and uh, and we have a like a, a murderous foreign policy. Uh, on the mass mass level and I you know it's just it's it is horrifying to see certain members ensconced in the sort of like blob or media that saying like yo go Madeline Albert I was glad I saw you rise to such power that is poison man yeah that is that's ghoulish stuff and and boy I mean let's let's I just want to break this down a little bit um you know for people who are unfamiliar um, you know, about exactly what these sanctions meant uh, for the people of Iraq, you know, you know, to be fair for the historical record, um, Albright did not impose these sanctions. Um, but in her role as a U.S. ambassador to the United Nations and then later as secretary of state, which is the capacity that she's being interviewed in that clip, um, she spent the majority of her career maintaining those sanctions um, and People should understand that the reason that you have to oppose sanctions is despite how targeted they say that they are, they always have a chilling effect on people. So in um, so the United States government, um, along with the United Kingdom government, worked to imp um, impose sanctions on Iraq. And they had veto power over any other kind of aid that went into the country. Now, do not forget that just a few years earlier, the United States um, Air Force had bombed water treatment facilities across the country um, in Iraq, which meant that their capacity for being able to provide safe drinking water for people um, was severely inhibited. 
So the United States government and the United Kingdom government used their position um, in the United Nations uh, to effectively veto any kind of humanitarian aid that went to Iraq under the pretense um, that that aid could potentially, if they, they, whenever they were vetoing things, they were saying that we're doing this uh, to prevent any potential that this goes into the hands of the U.S. military. And this is the spin, I'm sorry, the, the Iraqi military. This right. is the spin that they use, Right. And the, what are the kinds of things that they were vetoing um, from entering the country? Anti-cancer drugs, basic medicines, vaccines for children, stethoscopes, x-ray machines, all kinds of medical equipment, um, equipment to clean up uh, you know, depleted uranium, um, uranium that was disposed in, in, in battle, um, chlorine for water purification. Even at one point, sanitary napkins and pencils were banned um, because of this process, right? So this meant um, that people who need, might need chlorine, basically, to clean drinking water, were denied that because the U.S. would say, like, oh, well, maybe the Iraqi military uh, could have this in a you know first aid kit for their soldiers, Right. I mean, it's unbelievably cynical uh, to take them at the word. And at this point, tragically, uh, you don't have to because you can look and see the devastation that happened within that country. Now, let's be fair to Madeline here. In 2003, when she was very interested um, in correcting the record and, you know, cementing her legacy, she put out a memoir and she noted um, that 1996 interview where she said those despicable things. And she said, um, that her only regret there is that she wished that she had framed it differently um, well, yeah. and highlighted Saddam Hussein's role in the crisis, right? Think about that for a second, that this person uh, who was responsible for maintaining the most odious regime of denying people access to medicine and food and necessary supplies um, was saying her only regret about saying that it was worth it, the death of 500,000 children. You know, sometimes when you talk about numbers that big, it can be hard um, to really recognize. I mean, think about that for a second. 500,000 human beings, right? That's just the children. We're not even in including the adults as we should. I always find that, you know, right, yeah. we should be able to show humanity to all people, right? A million um, it's people. It's not like, oh, after you're 16, it's like, okay, for the United States government to starve you to death. Um, right. But her only regret there is that she wished that she had framed it different. That's the way that these kind of people think. That's right? psychopath talk. Yeah. It's a, it's a complete lack of humanity. We have, we have another clip, too, that I think is worthwhile. This clip I love because what it says is I think one of the like uh, themes that we want to continue playing here, which is that there is an uh, innate goodness in people no matter where they're from, even if they're in America, <laughs> for instance, underlying, like just ready to be, uh, well, always being suppressed, let's say. And this is a, a clip from Ohio State University in 1998. And uh, somebody pointed out this guy's name. It's something John. He's a public defender in uh, 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 Pennsylvania, I think Philly area uh, now. Um, but he asked this really great series of questions to Madeline Albright about this. Um, and in also like selling weapons and why the, you know, uh, the, the age old things of U.S. foreign policy. And listen to the crowd here. Uh, and I, I think it really like it's it's why the right is so focused on disciplining the left on campus um, and not mm -hmm. giving, for mm -hmm. instance, like Charles Murray enough um, uh, of leeway to talk about race science. But uh, here's this uh, section here. What do you have to say about dictators of countries like Indonesia, who we sell weapons to, yet they are slaughtering people in East Timor? What do you have to say about Israel, who is slaughtering Palestinians, who impose martial law? What do you have to say about that? Those are our allies. Why do we sell weapons to these countries? Why do we support them? Why do we bomb Iraq when it commits similar problems? Love it. The, uh, there are various examples of things that are not right in this world, and the United States is trying... I 
realize that people feel that it is necessary to defend the rights of Saddam Hussein, when what we ought to be thinking about is how to make sure that he does not use weapons of mass destruction. I'd like to. Who are like shouting? To make just a moment. I'm not defending him in the least. What I am saying is that there needs to be consistent application of U.S. foreign policy. We cannot support people who are committing the same violations because they are political allies. That is not acceptable. We cannot via violate U.N. resolutions when it is convenient to us. We You're not, not answering my question, answer. Madam Albright. Uh. Hmm. And... I mean, and that's the same old tactic. I mean, that's that's media training for people in power. You ask legitimate questions of government officials, and they accuse you of supporting the enemy. I mean, that's yeah. a that's an old playbook, boy. It's uh, unbelievable, and I mean, I love how uh, like it's interesting. Like nowadays, where you see this all the time in like social media and stuff, and you sort of. I, I'm very impressed by that guy's in the moment response uh, to like not put up with that shit mm -hmm. and understand that gambit for what it is. Um, talk about, yeah, I mean, lots of things happen that are bad in the world. Like, yeah, that's, we're talking about some of them <laughs> that we're responsible for. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> no, I mean, I highly suggest for people over the next few days, when you're reading uh, these glowing pieces about the different kind of pins, uh, that Albright was wearing, um, you know, obviously I was been very excited about the Putin ones. Um, you know, know what she, what, what she wore when she was uh, negotiating with Yasser Arafat, um, in Palestine, uh, she wore a B, um, to maybe make a kind of illusion about what she thought about, uh, dealing with this person. That was a buzzing kind of annoying thing. Right. I wonder what kind of pin she was wearing when she was meeting with the Saudi Royal family. Right. I mean, just to remind people when, uh, we get these kind of puff pieces, um, about this person that no, no, no. Um, like let's not get uh, excited about the bobbles. Let's talk about the record. Um, and the record stands very, very clear uh, that this person was very willing uh, to play a very significant role. Um, in American atrocities abroad, I gotta say I didn't know about this pin things. Like it's uh, it's running me. That's been the pin. big. That's been the this because you're uh you know you're you're too much with uh you know the good anti-war lefties, man. The the normal the normal people out there are all focusing on uh you know first woman secretary of state and how she used fashion um, to uh, make political statements. <laughs> Oh, I, I hadn't noticed the fashion. I must say, I did notice how much her rhetoric, like, was so obvious, like, how this fucking country invaded Iraq, talking that shit like that. Like, oh, you, you support Saddam. The thing we should be prioritizing is how to stop him from doing this super evil thing. Uh, you know, even, like, the, what's the mass destruction shit? Like, God damn. And there's a lot of people who think that um, if Bush didn't steal the 2000 election, which he did. Uh, Republicans did that we wouldn't have got into like a lot of the problems that um, Bush got us into. And like, I'm not sure like Tony Judd, the writer thinks that Bush uh, invaded Iraq because that's what like somebody does who does gets into power that way. But I got to say, like you listen to Madeleine Albright talk and these people are absolute fucking vampires and there should yeah. be no apology. Look, you shouldn't, you should be careful about what you say uh, about an, uh, uh, an invasion by like say Russia. But no one should apologize for being uh, hesitant to join these fucking chorus of ghouls in any support of any kind of action, like or pot, like getting the posture that they want you to get in because it's supposedly responsible or something like that. Like these people need to be treated with complete uh, uh, distrust, and uh, and you know, hope you can build upon that. And we don't need to be listening to their foreign policy advice and uh, luckily now we don't have to listen anymore from her kissinger i mean i'll list another one cheers to that next <laughs> yeah yeah